DOTI Diversity of Thought, Inc., which is a learning and development consulting firm. DOTI specializes in providing creative solutions to learning and development needs. David is also the co-creator of a social media show called We Are Not Okay. He's bringing his leadership and development profici proficiency to Brevard County is looking forward to sharing his expertise in the following categories, diversity, equality, and inclusion, psychological safety, um, facilitation skills. Uh, prior to starting his company, David was responsible for learning and developing for Best Buy Southeastern Region, which includes Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, and he's been all over the place, Mississippi, Alabama, Virginia, and Puerto Rico. He and his team are learning professionals who are responsible for onboarding and continuing education for all employees, agents, and leaders in the Southeastern region. Under David's, David's leadership, his team led Best Buy training completion percentage and had the lowest turnover in the history of the organization. David's team received um, uh -huh, commendations for, uh, sorry, having the highest employee engagement and highest sales performance for five years in a row. Who does not want that? That is great. David grew up in Brevard County. Oh, we have a fellow Floridian and he's happy to be back and raising his five-year-old daughter in the county he loves. So if we can give him a virtual round of applause. Yay, David. Hey, <laughs> thank you. I like the virtual round of applause. That's awesome. Uh, and yes, and by the way, that turnover number was very significant to us because in retail, I gotta tell you, Turnover is typically, if you're at 50% in, in uh, consumer electronics retail, you're, you're actually not so bad. And we had got dropped all the way down to 28% uh, for two years in a row, which was unheard of. And we actually got put into some books uh, that they teach in college. So I was like, oh, look at that. They're teaching about what we do. It's pretty amazing. Hi. Uh, so I am David Jones. I am the owner of Diversity of Thought, Inc. I'm very happy to be here today. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, because I am a training guy. So of course I came with a presentation. Let's see here. This and what, once he takes over the screen, just so you know, there's a little line there where you can expand the screen or expand the speak, speaker. As soon as I learn, as if I don't know what I'm doing on Zoom. Carolina, you gave him the rights to be able to share. Okay, perfect. Oh yeah, she gave me the rights. I'm just trying to find my actual presentation which is fun. So uh, while I'm uh, struggling to do so, I gotta ask you all a question as I look for this. Uh, how many of you hear diversity, equity, and inclusion and just get super excited and like, yeah, I can't wait for that. Anybody? Yeah? Oh man, I like you guys. You guys are better. Uh, <laughs> you are uh, better than what I have typically seen. Um, Let's see here. Ah, look at there. Can everybody see the screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. And I'm trying to see. I can't see you all. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be exciting. And I guess I am going to ask you to use the chat or unmute when you ask a question, because for some reason, this is different um, than when, oh. If you check the view in the upper right hand corner, sometimes that will um, alter it. But uh, sometimes when you have the slide, it does take people out. I see that and it's so funny. All right, so uh, I'm going to adjust what I said and said you can either unmute or answer the questions, but I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand because if I ask you to raise your hand, I won't see you. So uh, uh, diversity of thought, we understand that diversity, equity and inclusion trainings at time can sound like they're gonna be boring or check the box or why do I have to do this? And so we strive to ensure that uh, when we put together a training that is specific for the organization or the individuals that we're working with and that they're fun and exciting and engaging. Uh, now, as far as the way this is gonna go, is I'm gonna talk a little bit about our organization uh, and how we came to be who we are. And then we'll jump into the topic, which is why did they add that E in DNI? A few years ago, it went from DNI to uh, DEI, and there wasn't a lot of explanation to why. So we'll get into that conversation. So a little bit around uh, my organization, who we are. Uh, we are what's known as a social enterprise. So what that means is is that our business is uh, dedicated 
uh, to making sure a specific objective takes place uh, to, in our world, in our mind, to at least make the world a better place. Uh, we do that in trying to ensure that people understand social justice issues and opportunities and how to advance those to help marginalized people, to help understand diversity, and inclusion opportunities so that we can make sure that environments are as inclusive as possible and that you understand uh, how to look at diversity and not just in, in some of the ways that people do. Uh, but we are not a nonprofit, we are a for-profit business. So we do all of that. We have a social responsibility. At the same time, we look to maximize profits as well. So there we go, our mission. Uh, so our mission is simple. We, we uh, work with organizations of all shapes and sizes. Uh, we build learning solutions and our goal is to prepare people to change the world around them. Now, how I personally got to this organization and creating this, uh, I, as you heard, I used to work for Best Buy. Uh, Best Buy is a phenomenal organization. Uh, I, I came in on the corporate training side. Before that, I was a leader of many other organizations. And my leading style is I train people to be the best at what they can do. And I always look for how we can learn to find ways to be better. If we're always learning and trying to find ways to be better, then how can we ever get beat? And that led me into working with Best Buy's corporate side on the training team in which I moved up and became one of the training directors. Uh, as the training director, we got asked one day, hey, we know we have opportunities, this is about seven years ago, we have opportunities around diversity, equity, and inclusion. How would you like to be involved in this? I said, yeah, sure, why not? Because, you know, expanding my reach, heck yeah, let's do this. And I fell in love with the work. Uh, I was able to partner with leaders from all around the organizations and really sit down and analyze what our diversity, our diversity, equity, and inclusion opportunities were, and then how we can address them via learning solutions or uh, just a lot of different things that we put in place. And what we found was the work not only uh, benefited the territory that I was responsible for, which was the Southeast of the country, but that we rolled these programs out nationally. Um, and it led to some major breakthroughs that we had as organizations. We've, we saw an increase in women in leadership uh, in fact, uh, what's awesome about uh, Best Buy today is it's got the first female CEO in the history of its organization. Um, it also has a woman president, a woman uh, uh, HRO, CHRO. Basically, right now, women are running Best Buy. Uh, and, and we saw that growth not just at the top, but we saw that growth happen throughout the entire organization. Uh, as it relates to people of color, women, people with different abilities, it was just amazing. We started a diversity and inclusion steering committee and I just I fell in love with it. And then the problem is, is I have a daughter and I was on the road three weeks out of uh, a month and I was just missing too much. And so uh, I accepted a severance package, left and started my own company. And I said, I wanna do what I did with that organization for any individual organization here in the county that I grew up in before our county. So that is how I got here. Uh, a little bit about the organization, about the company, but let's talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this is one of those moments where you can unmute uh, uh, or you can put the answer in the chat. Why is diversity, and equity, inclusion important? I guess I've already given you the answer, but why is diversity, equity, and inclusion important? Diversity, equity, and inclusion is good for business. It's good for business. Did you know, Mark, see, I know that too because I know your voice. Uh, Mark, it's, it's, it is extraordinarily good for business. And there's been so many studies that showcase this. Uh, when I walk into organizations, I understand that people lead with diversity and equity inclusion is the right thing to do for people. And I see you are absolutely right. But it is also the responsible thing to do as an organization because it will make you profitable. Uh, there have been ridiculous amount of studies that showcase the more inclusive your environment is, the more diverse your staff is, uh, you, you get uh, higher market share, you get better profits, you drive revenue. Uh, you want to have the most inclusive and diverse environment that you can uh, when running an organization. But you should be able to define what that is. And there's a lot of ways that you can look at diversity. There's different definitions out there. Uh, we try to hone that in and give people uh, a, a certain perspective to help them, especially from a business stance when you're looking at diversity and inclusion. Uh, so I will ask, and this is for anybody that wants to put it in the chat, because nobody put an answer in the chat this time. So I'm going to ask for answers in the chat. And if anybody wants to unmute, you can do so. Uh, how would you define diversity? 
in the chat or you can unmute. How would you define diversity? Diversity is how you look. Okay, diversity is how you look. I got you, what else? I like it. Culture, different things to do things, way, different ways to do things, uh, learning, careers, anything. Differences. Okay, I see. So uh, uh, just differences. I, I, I love that word. I see multiple backgrounds. Uh, diversity is the presence of difference in a giving setting. Um, so in this case, because we're all business professionals, we're, we'll talk about the workplace setting. That's typically the difference refers to like, things like identity, like race, uh, gender, and sometimes uh, ethnicity, religion, nationality, or even sexual orientation. Uh, here's where we try to help organizations define it though. Uh, a person isn't diverse, they're unique and they can bring uh, diversity to a group. That's, that's the way you wanna look at it. Um, you're not looking for diverse candidates, uh, you're, you're looking to make your, your group more diverse. And so I'll give you an example. Uh, we were in South Florida and this, uh, this organization was celebrating because at a you know, it's, it's a pretty big organization. And in that one area, their diversity numbers, according to the organization, were amazing, were absolutely brilliant. Uh, in their leadership, they had about 13 locations. Uh, seven out of the uh, uh, 13 general managers were women. Uh, I believe nine were of Latinx descent. Two were African-American and one was a uh, white gentleman. And they said, we're diverse. And so I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask you this question. Was that a very diverse team? <laughs> I think it depends on, on what they're looking for, the profiles, the professional profiles more than, I don't know, if, if happen to be two Afro-Americans or it depends on the, what the needs of the company, right? Could be, yeah. There's a, see, and thank you for that. There's so much that goes into answering this question, is it diverse? Because again, we want a, uh, we want a group that is full of uh, diverse experiences and knowledge bases. Thank you for that, Amanda. Uh, we want a group that's going to bring a different perspective. And if everybody looks or thinks and acts the same, then you might lose what you're going to get from that profitability from being diverse. And then I even asked him, I said, well, if you take a look at your population and the demographics, does it necessarily match uh, your community? Because if you're not looking at it from that perspective, you could be in trouble. And what they found is it didn't necessarily, if you know anything about South Florida, it did make sense that their Hialeah location was heavily staffed. Uh, especially on the leadership side with Latin, people from Latinx descent. Um, but there were other areas where they just did not match their, uh, their community. However, the organization continued to celebrate them as being diverse. And we asked uh, the lone white general manager, uh, how does he feel? And he says, well, I feel pretty alone at times. And that leads us to the next question, because where there's diversity, some people automatically think that there's inclusion, but that's not necessarily the case. Before we just talk about that though, how would you define inclusion? You could put it in the chat or you can unmute and say it. Can I say inclusion? Yeah, give it to me. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. <laughs> me too, I'm included. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so uh, we, we practice this in the military when I was a veteran. In terms of inclusion, we, we provide, we're always providing access. Oh, we provide opportunities, whether any level of, you know, on the chain of command uh, to have those resources. So those so they were filled out. You know, those so they're filled that they're not part of the, or the team or they're because of their ranks or because. So we have a policy in the military that we provide that inclusion terminology to say, hey, we're all equal. Every individual, every person should have the same opportunity to those resources that we all have, no matter what rank or where they come from, uh, which guide us toward the diversity. Very good. Thank you for that, Greg. Um, I, I, I accept your terms and conditions. I also accept Kaori's because she says inclusion is how you feel. Uh, inclusion has to do with people with different identities feeling and are being valued, leveraged, uh, and welcomed within a given setting. 
Um, that could be a team, that could be a society, that could be an industry. Uh, inclusion though is not a natural consequence of diversity. So you can have a diverse team of talent, but that doesn't mean that they're welcomed um, or feel like they're valued or have opportunity to grow. So I was talking to you about the general manager. Uh, when we talked about meetings, uh, almost every meeting took place uh, had a more Latinx feel to it. And they never asked him like, hey, what would you like to see at this meeting? What restaurants would you like to go to? He was just never consulted in that. And at times was just kind of left out in the cold. Uh, and they just were very unaware of it because the conversation just wasn't happening uh, until we got there. Once the conversation started happening, we saw the environment shift. And then we saw a group of people that came together, learned more about each other, and then truly were creating uh, meeting spaces, having conversations that were so far beyond surface level uh, that, that two of the people that were thinking about leaving the organization uh, decided not only were they going to stay, uh, but have been recruiting more and more people to come and work for that organization because of the way it feels. Uh, and that's what we wanna to get to. We wanna see outcomes that really provide these types of success stories, because uh, those are important to us. We don't wanna do this for the sake of just doing so. Uh, I don't know if you've heard this saying, but Verna Myers is a very uh, well-respected educator in the diversity, equity, and inclusion space. And she, she coined this uh, saying some years ago, uh, diversity is being invited to the party, Inclusion is being asked to dance. That makes sense, right? Um, Shannon, I did too. I absolutely loved this saying when I heard it. And then, so <laughs> uh, it got interesting because as I was sitting there and, and they added the E, I was just like, oh man, so what happened? Because diversity is being invited to the party. Inclusion is being asked to dance. Equity is... And I said, well, it's funny because I actually have this experience where it showcases that diversity and inclusion is not enough. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through this story. Uh, at a point in time, eh, a few years ago, uh, won't say how long, I lived in Atlanta, Georgia. And I was dating this woman who absolutely loved to go dancing, uh, in particular, salsa and bachata. Now, I know what you're thinking. Like, yeah, that guy's probably really good at salsa and bachata, right? And the answer to that is no, I was not really good at salsa and bachata. Uh, I, I was born with two left feet. And, um, you know, as we would go out, this club, the name of the club is called Tongue and Groove. Uh, every Wednesday, they had a massive salsa and bachata night. In one room, it was salsa, the other room was bachata. And then she would love to go back and forth. And she invited me to this party. And this is Tugging Group. This is actually a video from the club. Uh, and, <laughs> and she would even ask me to dance. But when we would go out there and dance, I would absolutely feel guilty because I was slowing her down. Now, you're not like, this is very mellow, by the way, what you're seeing um, comparatively to like how it really breaks down. But all of a sudden you see now where they start spinning and they start like that. I couldn't do any of that. Like anytime I tried, she'd go flying and hit somebody. I'd be stepping on people. It was just, it was a bad look. And so I would either go out and, in, in, in my opinion, feel like I'm ruining her time because she can't really dance the way that she can. Or I would just have to sit there and watch her dance with somebody else, which was weird because you see this, well, you see, it's going backwards for some reason. You see that guy? Him. I was that guy. I was the guy that was just sitting there watching other men dance with my girlfriend. And I have to tell you, I don't know if you've ever seen bachata dancing, but it gets pretty familiar. So it's a weird, uh, it's a weird time. And so I'm sitting at the bar and, um, uh, you know, cause that's what you do. Uh, <laughs> and I was, I'm getting another drink. I looked at the bartender and I was like, man, this really sucks. And he said, why? I was like, well, you know, I just, I wish I could be a better dancer for her, but I'm not. So I just, I, I, I honestly feel like becoming is a burden more than anything. And he looked at me and goes, well, how come you don't come at seven? I said, well, what happens at seven? He goes, well, we get free bachata lessons and salsa lessons every Wednesday at 7 p.m. I was like, huh? <laughs> Excuse me? And so where do you think I was every Wednesday? I was in there and I was learning. She would come with me. It was another thing that we got to do together. And I became a really decent bachata and salsa dancer. And as you heard me, I said it decent. 
Uh, no, I didn't become absolutely brilliant and I'll never win any contest, but we had a significantly better time and that's what equity is. Tug and Groove did something absolutely brilliant and amazing. They provided a way to, uh, to bring equity um, in, into this problem that I was having. Uh, equity equals fairness. It's access to the same opportunity. Sometimes there are groups who might have been marginalized who need that little bit extra so that they can have the same. Uh, and there's a difference between equity and equality. Equality uh, equals sameness. That's giving everybody the same thing, but that only works if we're starting in the same place. Uh, we were not starting in the same place when it came to dancing. We just really weren't. We were in way too, like different levels. Uh, and even though I went to these classes, we never really got to the same place, but we got significantly closer where we could at least enjoy each other's time and appreciate it. And by the way, also appreciate, I appreciated the work and effort that this environment, that the, the organization provided to help me get to that space. She appreciated the effort of seeing me try to make sure that I can work my way up to make sure that I can uh, participate more, better, and, and we just had more fun. Uh, diversity and inclusion, they're both outcomes. Uh, equity is not an outcome. Equity is just gonna, it refers more to the process that the organization is actually engaging in. Uh, and it wants to make sure that marginalized uh, identities or people with marginalized identities have the opportunity to grow, contribute, and, and to develop. So what we do is we as an organization find either unique experiences that we could talk about to help people understand or bring in just different activities, especially when we do in-person organizations to help them understand. We have a great equity activity. Uh, it is a diversity, equity, inclusion, Pictionary game. Um, and it, every time we talk about like, hey, we're gonna do, play Pictionary, the diversity, equity, inclusion edition, you see people's face like, oh my God, what are they about to make us draw? Uh, but I promise you it's safe, it's HR appropriate, and it's extraordinarily fun, but it lands so many points to help people understand why equity is such a big piece in the diversity, equity, and inclusion space. So we do have a program, our FLEX program at Diversity of Thought, Inc. Uh, this is uh, where you can find yourself, learn about others, embrace uniqueness, and expand your world because we want to make you strong. That's why we FLEX. Uh, just to give you a, a couple of highlights, so for the Find Yourself, we have a few different programs. Inclusion Starts With Eyes, where we ask people to start. Uh, what's great is we just put up some virtual classes, so you can go to dotty.us and sign up for those classes. They're only $49.99. Uh, it's a one-hour session, but I promise you, you'll leave with three tangible things that you can do to, uh, to create a more inclusive environment anywhere around you, and you'll have a significantly better understanding of not just inclusion, um, but what gets in the way of that and how you can mitigate it. We also teach our communication styles. A lot of people don't think about that as a, as a terms of diversity, but lack of communication or the ability to communicate with each other is, is such a huge opportunity. And understanding how you learn and how others learn uh, and your meta, uh, your meta communication uh, profile can truly help you in this space or just really just be a better uh, <laughs> communicator with everyone. And then psychological safety uh, is another, I am uh, one of, I believe, two people on the East Coast that is certified to teach, train, um, and coach psychological safety. Uh, there's a whole safety assessment, which it helps break down, uh, basically, he, what are the motivating factors that drive your behavior and how do you mitigate those things? There's an assessment that you could take, it's pretty cool. As it relates to learning about others, we have different exercises that we have and uh, programs that we have. We have intercultural competence training, which helps uh, individuals become better with very specific cultures. So while we have these diversity, equity, and inclusion training seminars and conversations, intercultural competence is very specific. So uh, I just worked with a board who said, hey, we just understand that we really don't have a lot of experience with the African and uh, Black and African American community here in Brevard County. Uh, so we built out this intercultural competence training to help bridge that gap. Uh, business chemistry, that just lets you know the type of uh, your business style. And uh, when you have like different business styles, if you all know your business styles, you know how to work better together and you know what to ask people to do. It creates a more inclusive environment. Uh, the IM exercise is something that's extraordinarily powerful, but we will not do unless we've done other things first because it goes very deep uh, into the, to, to make up a psyche of who you are and the ability to share that with the group. 
Uh, it's very powerful, but it's also, but I'm telling you, it's good, but it's like, we actually have a psychologist that's on hand that's ready to talk to people if they need it. That's how deep that, that seminar and training goes. And then we do team psychological, uh, team psychological safety workshops, where it's not just like the individual psychological safety training, but we can actually do it as a workshop with your, with your entire group. Uh, embracing uniqueness, we do a lot of different how-to exercises uh, uh, and define to redefine. So, for example, uh, people had a misconception of Kwanzaa, and so we help them define what it is to redefine how they can actually participate in it. And then we walk through some how-to exercises uh, of how somebody who is not of the uh, Black African descent can actually participate and embrace and celebrate Kwanzaa with those who are. So that's just one example. Uh, and then we also have a program, Ending Subtle Acts of Exclusion. Uh, there's a term microaggressions that, get, get, that gets tossed out there often. Uh, we look at it as subtle acts of exclusion just because from the terminology and hearing it, microaggression sounds minor and minimum and aggression sounds very aggressive. So it can create this very like defense, you know, talking to somebody and say, hey, that was a microaggression. Um, just hearing that I wasn't aggressive can create a def uh, someone to be very defensive and that's so hard to get over. So we try to utilize the language that uh, says the same thing, but doesn't create the barriers that some of the other language does. And then last, but certainly not least, uh, expanding your world where we do experiential learning events. Uh, again, that, that organization that didn't have a lot of access to the Black and African American community. So it wasn't just classroom learning, but then we actually went into the community in which they did not have a lot of uh, understanding and knowledge uh, and experience with. And what we do is we, we partner with different nonprofits and different organizations in those communities to come together. Uh, I got additional programs and services. We have two programs. We just launched a nonprofit. Uh, our two programs in our nonprofit is our Lev Lift Every Voice, where we use different social media uh, platforms. We operate with different social shows. Uh, you can see one that will be transferring into that as a partnership with Brevard Cultural Alliance called True Colors. You can actually see that today airing at, I think, 1 p.m. And then Building Cultural Bridges, where we actually have, uh, uh, we take cultures or communities that don't necessarily understand or see eye to eye and build bridges to connect those. So we have a program that we're launching, working with law enforcement officers and the Black and African American community. And then we also offer consulting, whether it's DEI, uh, if you want to find your purpose to make your mark on the world. So you want your organization to be uh, more around, like how are we making this world a better place? We do that. And then we also do uh, uh, help organizations understand the purpose and the importance of the mindset of disruption. Because if you're not disrupting your business, somebody else is looking to, and you don't want to be on the opposite end of that. You want to be the disruptor. I do all of this for a reason for this little girl right here, uh, because if I can find a way to make this place better uh, for her, uh, then I know I am doing my job. So that was my presentation. Now I can see you all again. Hey, you all are beautiful. Um, I have time for questions. I think I have like five minutes. Any questions, go. Awesome. Yes, ma'am. Jerry. And should, I mentioned to you, I had met you on another um, session of these, and I told the CTR, the organization, it will be well worth your while to look into it because it's for the multicultural organization that's international. That, as a tip, you know, and I have the name of the past president if you want to revisit that. But on the on on what you discussed just now, I feel totally blessed more than ever that I had parents that kept on reminding me that it wasn't the color of my skin, but what I had upstairs that would make a difference, you know, in my life. And I went throughout the world. I, you know, wherever I went, I never thought of that I was different. And I lived in the breadbasket of the United States in Kansas in the 70s. And they took me on. I was teaching Spanish at the university. I was, but it never occurred to me. And now that I'm hearing all of this, I said, my goodness, how blessed am I that it never ever was a problem in my life, you know, that when I came to in Brevard 25 years ago, it was all I saw in my church was a sea of white people and they didn't know what to do with me, so to speak. And I said, <laughs> you know what, I'm here to stay. And and it's okay now, you know, I blended in. But and it makes me sad in a way because people feel that because it's the color we have to prove that we no, we're all, you know, and I'm not Haitian American. I'm American just like all of you. And you know, and I, 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 I'm very proud of that. 
and I more and more I say thank you to my parents because really I grew up without a chip on my shoulder so to speak and I'm okay you know and uh, anyways if I can help others to come to that realization I would be happy to do so because um, it, it is it's a burden in our society without a doubt and, and Jerry there are definitely um, uh, individuals who have that same experience and those who don't what we do is we try to enable environments to where there's not a right or wrong in that scenario. Your parents weren't wrong in raising you that way. And your experiences are your experiences, but they, they're unique to you. And that's the beauty of diversity, equity, and inclusion is that uh, the uniqueness of our individual experiences can dictate how we feel or see the world around us. Uh, so for you, if it wasn't the color of your skin, and you never felt that that's awesome, that's not necessarily always gonna be the case for others. So how do we find a way to communicate so that your story and other stories are still trying to accomplish the same thing and that's an improve and enhance the environment that, in which you uh, uh, preside in. So there is no right or wrong necessarily perspective if the outcome is the improvement and the betterment and treatment of all individuals. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Thank you, Joe. I also should mention I am a board member of the Greater Palm Bay Chamber, the greatest chamber of Bavar County, um, and a co-chair of the multicultural uh, group. So uh, if you guys could, just a, a quick plug, 5 o'clock. Is it 5 p.m., Carolina, on Thursday? 5 p.m., happy hour. You got to throw a commercial out there, so. Perfect. Okay, so no questions. Thank you guys. I really appreciate the time and the opportunity to speak to all of you. You are absolutely beautiful. I wish I could have seen you during it because I'm sure you're just as beautiful while I was talking. Shannon, I just wanted to um, say there uh, was information that came from the SBA this morning that um, they have prioritized the smallest of small business for the PPP loans. And so they are establishing a 14 day window that is for nonprofits and small businesses with fewer than 20 employees. Um, they're also allowing sole proprietors, independent contractors and self-employed individuals to receive more financial report support <clears throat> by revising the PPP uh, funding formula. So this is really good news for a lot of you and I am you know, the SBA has a lot of that information on their website and we'll be having more. And like I mentioned before, we have that training on the 9th at one o'clock with all the four chambers and the SBA and we venture. So uh, join us for that if you want some assistance to help you walk through that. But, um, you know, they are also, um, eliminating PPP access restrictions on small business owners who have struggled to make federal student loan payments by eliminating federal student loan debt delinquency and default uh, as disqualifiers to participating in the PPP. So, um, you know, that's some good news. So just wanted to pass that along to everybody that they have sent that information down and more I'm sure will be coming. So want to echo that, uh, Nancy, that this um, new effort to focus on small businesses, but especially to take note that it includes not-for-profit organizations. Many people thought that the PPP did not include not-for-profit organizations before, and the prior PPP, I'm sure you saw, was criticized because some major companies took millions and millions of dollars out of the PPP and the smaller companies did not have access, did not get the awards. And it's uh, this effort, I've circulated that uh, notice already as I would participate in SCORE, which is uh, sponsored by the Small Business Administration. The SBA is getting this out. We're doing the training. We're trying to make sure that small businesses, minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses, new businesses, startup businesses are reaching out and participating in this PPP program because we're in a new paradigm with this uh, 
working from home and working virtually. Our companies are struggling. We're working with our families. And this program from the Biden administration is a fantastic opportunity. Reach out, participate. If you need help, contact me. I can put these business plans together. I want to help. I want to serve in this community.